So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make a rechargeable power supply, uh, a 12 volt power pack that you can use to integrate into something like a 12 volt LED light panel so that you have a battery backed up and mains supplied power option when you're running something like a, a portable project LED light panel or anything else running on 12 volts. So it seems a little bit complicated, but as long as you've got the right components put together, it's reasonably straightforward, so let's take a look. Okay, so step number one is to pull the components together. You will need a BMS, whether it's a standard BMS or a BMS that has balancing built in. You'll need some battery holders. I'm using 18650 cells here. They need to be 3.7 volt cells. Um, I'm using some decent Panasonic cells. Uh, these are the nipple type, but that doesn't matter as long as your battery holders accommodate whatever kind of battery you're using. If you're using solder tab batteries, you probably won't even need the battery holders at all, but for this, it's convenient. You will also need a Max 745 board. Now this particular board I've covered before, link, in the, uh, link to that video in the description of this one. And I'm also using a Step Up um, XL6009, I think it is from memory, uh, a Step Up voltage regulator. Now what this one does is it takes the external 12 volt supply and it boosts it to 15.6, which is the input required by the Max 745 to properly charge the cells through the BMS. So the external power is obviously 12 volt. That kicks it up to 15.6 so that the Max 745 can do its job and properly charge via constant current and then constant voltage the three Panasonic cells. So step number one, insert your cells into your battery holders or at least get them ready to go in and connect up your battery configuration the way the BMS is required to be wired. Each BMS is a little bit different, they're not always laid out the same. So just take note of how your BMS requires the cells to be connected. And as you can see here, this BMS has a, a specific wiring requirement and I've done so, and I've done it all on the back of those battery holders so you can see how everything is actually connected. So just take a close look at that and that's how, if you're using one of these BMS, that's how this is wired up to turn it into a 12 volt battery pack. And the two connectors at the top of the BMS are the input and output. So the MAX745 provides charge to the cells by those two pads. And you also extract your external power from the BMS and the cells to power your light or a, your 12 volt project. So at that input and output point, that is where you want to connect up, obviously the correct sides of the MAX745 board, uh, input to input, output to output and then connect the XL6009 voltage regulator after you've tweaked it. This particular version has a um, potentiometer in order to be able to dial in the exact voltage that you want. I've set this one to 15.8, and that's just to give me a tiny little bit of headroom. It's 15.6 is the requirement of the MAX745, but those voltage regulators go up to about 34 volts anyway. So we have our 3S pack wired up. We have our MAX745 connected to the BMS. We have the voltage regulator feeding the MAX745 and we have our external 12 volt power supply. Now the external 12 volts connects to the voltage regulator and powering the project. So when we have external power connected, it is driving your project, in my case a 12 volt LED panel, and powering the 3S battery pack, charging it. Now, what will happen, the way we've got this connected here, is you don't want the external 12 volts running back through your primary power connection to the BMS and bypassing all of this charging circuitry. So what we wanna do is we wanna use a diode, a reverse current diode that basically blocks any current going back the 12 volt line and makes sure that only the 12 volts coming through the voltage regulator going through the MAX745 is going into the cells and providing the charge. Now I've used a six amp reverse current diode in this case. During my testing, it was getting pretty toasty. I think it was just inside of tolerance up to around about 92 degrees Celsius. So what I've done is I've just added two um, just to be able to share some of the load, probably just act as a heat sink more than anything else. So 
in that instance they got up to around about 70 degrees between 65 and 70 so that's well within tolerance and I'm happy with that so I ended up using two of those reverse current diodes so ultimately it's not in a polished or finished configuration but at this point this demonstrates a working circuit whereby you can have a project such as an LED panel connect external power leaving a 3S BMS 12 volt power supply integrated within your project have the external power power your project and recharge the cells and obviously when you don't have external power you can run your project on um, battery power and keep in mind that this configuration using the reverse current diodes works but it's not ideal because you can you have a continual loop a circuit that's always connected meaning the power will still flow from the battery pack to your drain which in this case is an LED light panel always draining the batteries unless of course your external supply has more than enough power to meet all of the current draw requirements of the panel or your project in this case it's about 5 amps anything short from that it's going to take its shortfall from the battery pack ideally you would have an isolated uh, relay connected where roughly where the diodes would be what that would do is as 12 volt is connected the electrically isolated relay is triggered and it completely disconnects the battery pack from the loop from the actual circuit that would mean that the charge would still come in through the regulator in the max 745 but it would fully charge the batteries and not be drained at all whilst there's external power connected when external power is disconnected the relay would switch off or on depending on how it's connected and your battery pack would be able to provide power to the LED light panel. All right, that'll pretty much do me for this one. Thanks very much for joining me. If you like that idea, give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me again next time.